Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at probably one of the most famous prehistoric mammals, the saber-toothed cat. Its scientific name is Smilodon, but it's probably better known as the saber-toothed cat, or perhaps as the saber-toothed tiger, although this would be inaccurate, as the Smilodon is not closely related to tigers. The saber tooth lived in North and South America during the Pleistocene Epoch from around 2.5 million years ago up until around 10,000 years ago. There are three species recognised as Smilodon. The earliest and smallest was Escracilis, which lived up until 500,000 years ago. It weighed between 55 and 100 kilos and was most likely the ancestor of the other two species. S. Fatilis is more intermediate in size, with estimates of 160 to 280 kilos. Its entry in the fossil record incorporates the final three-sixths of the Smilodon's temporal range, 1.6 million years ago near the start of the Calabrian until the early Holocene 10,000 years ago. This overlaps the existence of S. Gracilis by a little over 1 million years. The largest and last species of Smilodon is S. Populator, known in the fossil record from the upper part of the Calabrian until the early Holocene 10,000 years ago. Study of Smilodon remains also indicate that for a period of 500,000 years between the Calabrian and the Ionian stages, all three species would have existed and been active at the same time as one another. The first fossils of the saber were found in the 1830s in Brazil by Danish naturalist Peter Willem Lund, who also named the genus. North American fossils were found later, around the 1860s onwards. They were fairly rare until excavations began in the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, where hundreds of individuals of S. fertilis has been found since 1875. The saber-toothed cat here in Ark is probably based on the largest of the three species mentioned, S. populator. This name means the destroyer, or he who brings devastation. It was slightly larger than a modern lion, but probably weighed almost twice as much due to it being heavily muscled. It was much stockier built than modern big cats, taller at the shoulders but shorter in body, with a short tail and large feet. The legs were very powerful, and Smilodon would have been a good leaper, making it an unaccomplished ambush predator. It was thought that the saber tooth would drop down on its prey from trees and sink in its famous canine teeth to deliver the kill. This is conceivable for the smaller Escracilis, as it would have been about the same size as a modern leopard, which spends a lot of its time in the trees. But for the larger species, it would have been impossible due to their weight. So what about those huge canine teeth for which the creature gets its name? At first glance, these razor-sharp, foot-long teeth appeared devastating weapons, but in reality they were actually quite fragile and could easily be snapped off. The saber would be incapable of biting down onto bone, for instance. The saber-toothed cat also had a much weaker bite force than many other large cats, but this actually gave them an advantage. With weaker jaw muscles, the saber was able to open its mouth much wider and so be able to bite down with its huge teeth. Modern lions can open their jaws to an angle of 60 degrees. Smilodon could open its jaw to a huge 120 degrees, twice as wide. The most likely hunting strategy for Smilodon was to ambush its prey using its huge bulk and strength, wrestle the animal to the ground, pinning it in place and stabbing its massive canine teeth into the prey's vulnerable areas. There is evidence that the saber-toothed cat hunted in packs. Many fossils show signs of injuries to the bone to the areas of muscle attachments that are so serious that they would take weeks and even months to heal, and would be enough to prevent a Smilodon from actively hunting. In solitary creatures, these wounds would mean that the animal could not hunt and would actually starve to death. But many of the Smilodon specimens show that they had healed. This means that the injured Smilodon had to get its food from somewhere while it recovered and one explanation is that it was supported and fed by other members of the group. This behaviour can be observed in prides of lions today. Also, due to the huge numbers of specimens found in the Labra tar pits, it could indicate hunting packs of Smilodons attempting to get to herbivores like the bisons and camels that had become trapped in the tar and then becoming trapped themselves. Interestingly, the name Labra means the tar, so when you say the Labra tar pits, you are actually saying the the tar tar pits. 
The Smilodon became extinct around 10,000 years ago. Its extinction has been linked to the disappearance of the large megafauna which it hunted. These large animals were being replaced by smaller, faster creatures. With its large, powerful, yet slow build, it's likely that the Smilodon couldn't keep up with these creatures and were unable to adapt. This, along with climate change and competition for food with the newly arrived humans, spelled the end for these incredible creatures. Well, that's all for today's talk, and I really hope you've enjoyed it, and as always, I hope you've learned something new. I would really appreciate it if you did enjoy the video, so let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And please subscribe for more Extinct Creature Talks here at Shredder Zoo. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.